Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Before we get into the topic, um, if you're interested in degree apprenticeships or other early career stuff, I'm going to leave a link in the bio below um, of my degree apprentice SAS. What is going on here? Anyway, so in the description, I'm going to link my degree apprentice hub SAS. Um, and on this website, you can see my experience um, of the degree apprenticeship. And also you can get resources and there'll be a section for you guys to network with each other or ask me questions, um, more like a Twitter feed. And also in the description, I'm going to link my uh, portfolio. So you can see what technologies I work with um, and you can go onto my GitLab um, or my leak code. Um, so yeah, if you're a tech guy, a tech girl, you'd probably be interested in that or you could just go on it to have a laugh. Um, so anyway, uh, without further ado, let's get into the video. Yeah, so into the video. So my two year experience of the degree apprenticeship, so like halfway point and there's two more years left. Um, just for those of you that don't know the background on this channel, um, basically this is a channel where I just post about random stuff about myself. Um, but the degree apprenticeship that I've started now is my second degree. So I had wow. a chemical engineering degree or have a chemical engineering degree. And yeah, decided to do software engineering and thought that the best way to do this was through a degree apprenticeship. So I've been doing this for two years and yeah, let's talk about it. And yeah, how's it been? So I would say it's been good um, so far. It's been very stressful, but good. So before I went into this uh, software engineering degree apprenticeship, I knew nothing about tech. I barely knew anything about computers apart from obviously you can use the internet and that type of stuff like you can game but I didn't know much about programming or networks or how it all connects together um, how like the fundamental parts of a PC work and to be honest I still like roughly don't have a clue now because I've had to learn so quickly it is going to cement and I know it will but my programming side is much better um, I've been able to build like applications and work with different technologies, learn them super quick, um, which is exactly what I wanted from the program. Um, and I'll talk about them later in the video. In terms of the stressful bad stuff, like there's so much admin and so much, so many modules, like you have to go in person to lectures and all this stuff to organize around having a job, like a full-time job. It's pretty stressful, but also in the department that I was put in, I never had they've never had an apprentice. So they don't really know what's going on and I'm having to kind of help them get through that for like, the, you know, what work I should get um, or like what's best for me to link it with uni and all this stuff. And like, that is so much effort compared to some of the other apprentices who kind of have, have it all laid out for them. But yeah, so anyway, overall in general, it's been like mixed, quite good, but obviously the general other stuff that's like stressful. And on top of that, like I'm trying to learn languages and building like my personal projects and doing courses to kind of get my skills up for when I finish um, because I hope to go into data engineering. But yeah, so that's what I've been busy with recently. Um, but let's get into what I actually do, like what I've actually done in terms of projects at uni or in the workplace. Um, so I can give you a bit of insider knowledge. So obviously I'm not gonna show the work stuff but just like an overview, I've worked on some test automation to like automating actions of a user to like logging onto a browser, loading up an application, doing some clicks to basically imitate a feature that we developed either on a web app or a native app. So I've done that with Python, Selenium um, and other frameworks basically. And then obviously done all the agile kind of things that you you know, work with, like work in sprints and then use Jira, that type of thing. And then I did a project with GitLab um, where I basically implemented a CI CD pipeline, which basically is when you um, automate the process of like, let's say you write code and you want to take it to production from development. Um, in this pipeline, it'll basically just check the code is up to standard, it's been merged, blah, 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 gets it ready in a build and then sends it to production for it to be run. Um, and then also I've like had to upskill in Java because we use Java a lot and I like never used it. I never did programming, like I said, two years ago and yeah, had to upskill in that. So I've done that recently, which has allowed me to build 
for the wraps. So yeah, that's what I've done at work. On to the next part is what I've done at uni. So I'm going to show some of the assignments and the applications that I built, but mainly at the uni side, would learn programming, business focused modules, um, and then yeah, like database context kind of thing. So database design and implementation, I don't know why that American accent came out. And also um, stuff to do with like IoT networks. Anyway, I'll show you now. So we did maths and all that good stuff, but um, I'm gonna show you this cyber risks assignment, which was not that great um, for me, but I've got two one in it and I just quickly scroll past all that random stuff. So in this assignment, we basically had to create a design for um, like basically how these three accounting companies were going to um, basically secure their networks. So like servers, all that good stuff. Um, and then who would basically overlook the project. Um, so we designed this like, I don't know, proposal. Um, and then I had like, you know, a cybersecurity manager, blah, 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 um, instant analysts. Basically you just research what each person is going to do and how they're going to contribute. Um, and then, I, and then you go into like kind of the scope of the project. Um, and then like a high, a high level overview of the project, then you do a risk assessment, um, which are like literally made up figures as well. Like none of these, I mean, I've got figures on like business value and things like that, but this is all kind of made up on what you think that the company's loss would be based on the cyber risks. Uh, like if someone takes advantage of those cyber risks. So then you have like controls as well. Um, and then you also, we also went into like network design almost. So like, you know, what would be the ideal infrastructure for the companies to collaborate under this like new proposal that you designed. So yeah, like it's pretty cool. I'm not really like cyber security based. So to be honest, like I found it super boring. So next on the list is like this business assignment. This was a bit different. This was like uh, based on some like another fictional company, um, which is basically a motor like service, like where you get your car service, that type of company. And that was on like luxury, com uh, luxury vehicles. Like they partner with luxury brands, like whatever, Aston Martin, any other brand you can think of, Bentley, um, Land Rover, anything. So yeah, we, in this, in this project, you had to then like revamp. It's just a bit like business focused. It's not really programming a focus, but you're going to, um, talk about kind of like information systems. Um, so what I did was design this whole like revamped um, facility where they'd get their cars serviced and then designed a process for them to basically be more efficient. Um, and then they would use like this new ERP um, like with SAP and AWS and all this stuff. And you basically kind of like mesh it together where you research and give a case for why your proposal would benefit the company like financially and also process wise um or like time wise i guess so yeah and then you give a proposal for like yeah how much money they're going to spend on you know like down to the workforce and the materials um i mean that would give you a better grade so yeah this is this is the first and quite a good one like i think like 80 something so yeah there's, there's that one so then getting into the like more programmy side ones in the first year. Um, so there was like a database design and implementation, which I mentioned earlier. This is just a report of it. So we're just given this raw data set in Excel and all you had to do was do analysis on the data set. Oh, never mind. That was the other one, which I'll show you in a moment. But in this one, you had to basically model the database and create the database the American accent came out, create the database. Um, and we use MySQL. You could have used NoSQL, but to be honest, like I think everyone just chose MySQL in the end. Um, so yeah, you like model it with normalization and all 
the database topics like the available generalization, uh, specialization, um, and then all the relationships in relational databases, so like one to many, many to many, one to one, like why, then you justify why, you know, you gave it whatever relationship. Um, then you do like a, a physical design to basically say, you know, how do we make like the actual transactions on the database efficient? How do you, so you're not just like, I don't know, making it really expensive because your database is crap basically. Um, and then you also went into database security as well, but like MySQL has some features built in. I think PostgreSQL is like the industry one that everyone thinks is like super amazing. So there's that. Um, then again, like project timeline, conclusion, um, yeah. Database one, that was also a first. Wow. So we learned Python and C++. There was a C++ exam, which like I just did so bad on. So we'll, we'll not mention that one, but uh, on, the Python project, this is where we had to get that raw Excel data sheet, analyze it and then display in a UI using Tkinter, um, which is like a base, like a native app um, package, which you can use with Python to display applications. So yeah, uh, create some source code. You had to show you could use like OOP and it, this looks so bad to me now, but um, I, should, I probably should have like a security class um and other things but you had to test the application as well with PyTest or it might have been unit test and then this is like you had to show inheritance you had to show polymorphism and all the like basic programming oop kind of things which you don't really have to do with python but at this point i was like bro like i didn't know you 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 know like i thought you had to write it this way like it isn't it is in industry it's preferred, but in some like, you know, data engineering, you might not go into OOP with Python. Other languages like Java are more like OOP focused, which I found out recently. Um, so I'll just run this script uh, so you can see what the actual app looks like, if it'll run. I mean, I do all the analysis, like as before the app loads, which makes it, it takes ages to load because there's so much data, there's like 300,000 cells in this Excel. Um, but yeah, I just created this thing, it showed this data and you had to like, in the assignment, you had to get the most, the, the incidents with the most districts and their average time gap. And then I tried to like add some other stuff to it. Like this is some uh, like information, like light mode, light mode, dark mode. And there was something to do with like a, a key. Oh yeah, then you could put this key that was like some crypto stuff. Cause I was obsessed with crypto, but anyway, yeah. And that one was also good, also first. So thankfully we didn't have to write a report on that one, but in second year, we built a full web app with Python Flask, um, which I don't know if I've talked about on the channel, but anyway, so we built this application and you actually had to write a report on it and you had to put it on uh, GitLab properly um, and you would have got better marks if you hosted it like live or used an actual database rather than JSON. So yeah, um, I'll just do a flask run to show what the app looks like. Um, this was more complicated, like this was more object oriented um, in terms of programming. And I'll just go into the source code before I open that, that app. So yeah, like, you know, you have models. Um, to be honest, again, I could have put like a models directory and then had the user model in its own directory rather than have literally every single <laughs> model in, in one in one file, which is ridiculous. Um, it's not that bad, but... Uh, and then like had all the... I could have had the roots in their own directories and there's like forms. It's more object oriented and then there's templates for like, you know, so in this, in this project, I learned HTML, CSS, JavaScript, like minimal JavaScript, but I learned it. And as I said, I hosted it on a AWS server. Um, so learn about like, uh, load balances, all that stuff. And like networking, using networking principles or like cloud computing, um, and Docker as well. And also had a pipeline for it. So this was like a full project almost like, I don't think most people did that, but 
it gave me like an overview of like full stack dev. You know, you do the back end, you do the front end, you do the CI C D like DevOps D side. Uh yeah. So just to show you that app that is running as well. Uh, the UI I honestly could be better. No, it could be really like it to me now because I've built other applications with I think cooler design and I was focusing on actually getting the application done rather than designing it. Um, I think this looks not not the best, <laughs> but yeah, it's got like fully functional buttons and stuff, and there's products on the website, and, you know, you can filter it wherever else you want. So, yeah. And that was also a first, which is cool. And it obviously has got built URL as well, so you can see like a breakdown, but that's done in the application side. I just forgot to show you the actual report as well for that. So I'm just going to get that up and close that as well. I mean, look at this as a front page. Tell me you're not going onto this report, seeing that and thinking this is going to be a good report. It might be garbage, but you know, I've put effort in. Um, so yeah, that was like the implementation overview of like the ap application you built. So again, you had to write a report whilst building it. Like it was, it was honestly so long. It was so long. Um, like requirements, the UI design, you see that's like AWS signage. Like I did that on Lucid or whatever. Or Lucid. Yeah, Lucid. Yeah, do sequence diagrams, that sequence diagram it is. And this is like another modeling of the database, but it's kind of the class diagram rather than database entities. And then you had to explain the application, um, which again is like screenshots of the project, like of the of the code. And then I, I talked to yeah, GitLab CI CD pipeline. I put build job, which deployed it to AWS S3 bucket. And then using Docker, I ran it on the EC2 uh, VM. So like I basically deployed it and ran it on a computer, which AWS hosts. Um, and then, yeah, I talked about how the work progressed and yeah, another good project. And there's also this appendix. So look, I mean, it was good two years so far. There's two years coming up, which will have the main bulk of the I guess the work that I'm going to do in the future, which is like specialized modules, personal project, which will basically have the foundation for if I want to be a data engineer or whatever I want to be. Um, I need to do projects now that are ready. So when I want to get like their engineer job or ML engineer, I say that like I did this and also worked for whatever company I work for now. And so like I'm ready basically. In terms of advice, I think Obviously, having done a degree in the past and doing one now that I enjoy, my first piece would be to select something that makes sense for you, like something you actually know about. Um, because I did ChemEng and I didn't really know about it, but I kind of knew you could make money in it, oil and gas, whatever, you know, the buy they're making money. So it made sense to me and I had the A-level, so I was like, let's do it. Then it was like, I didn't enjoy it and I don't want a job in it now. But software, I really enjoy it. And outside of work, like I still write loads of code. So yeah, that's like super good. I think the best thing, I mean, now that I'm doing a degree that I enjoy, like I can work hard on it and get good grades, like I say, but whatever it is that you do, I think whether it's degree or anything else, like my main advice would just be chunk it in simple steps and small steps. Like don't expect to be some amazing guy or gal overnight, like just work on it half an hour a day, an hour a day, um, even if it's code. And over the years, yes, years, because you have to be committed and disciplined, you will be where you want to be. So anyway, hope you enjoyed that video. Um, I'll be bringing more videos out. Sorry, I haven't posted in last month. I've posted some shorts, but yeah, catch you next time.